Hello YouTubes and welcome to this week's devlog. A week of game development where I show you what I've did in this past week in my spare time on the game Fireworks Mania that I'm currently working on. So let's get started with actually looking at some of the feedback I got from the last video where I asked if anybody had an idea of what I should model this physics tool as. You know, what kind of thing it should look like. And one of the suggestions came from Sheepdog that suggested that it should be kind of a laser pointer. So I went into Blender and started modeling a laser pointer because it's actually a pretty good idea. I started off playing around with some texture stuff because I wanted this laser to glow in certain part. Some of the materials of the laser should be kind of glowy. Um, so I had the theory how I could do this because I've seen tutorials on YouTube and stuff like that. So I knew how it could work. Um, but this was the first time I actually did it and tried it out. So let's see how it went. So with the textures in place it was uh, time to start actually modeling. Uh, when I started I had no idea how this would look other than kind of a long laser pointer thingy. So uh, I just uh, played around with stuff and um, I actually think the result turned out pretty nice. So um, here's a little time lapse of me building this model in Blender. Again, I might note that I'm very new in Blender. I started when I started with this game, never done anything in Blender before. So um, a lot of this is a first for me. And as I'm learning Blender, let me also give a shout out to Infensia from Sweden, which have uh, currently done a lot of videos where he models stuff in 10 minutes. And these videos actually contain a lot of good um, information on how you can do certain tricks. Uh, for instance, in a moment ago, I did uh, extrude from the normal. So yeah, Blender specific stuff with uh, Alt E. That's something I learned from him, for instance, um, and that makes it easier to extrude out from where the faces are. I, I don't know how to explain it. Anyway, look at some of his videos. They are actually pretty good. I'll put a link in the description. So after some trial and error on exporting the model and getting it into the right size in Unity, and some fiddling around with the material to actually make it glow in this line I made around the laser pointer here on the physics tool. It actually turned up okay in Unity. It's a little small right here, so I'm not completely done, but at least it's inside. It have the right colors and glowing as I expect. And then I kind of locked my computer because I had to go eat some dinner. And it was at this point I realized that I had not stopped the recording in OBS. So OBS continued recording and ended up recording kind of an hour or an hour and a half of my wife playing Roller Coaster Tycoon 3. So note to self, remember to stop recording when leaving the computer. It ended up with a four hour file taking up 30 gigabytes on my hard drive. So uh, yeah, note to self, stop the recording when leaving the computer. After this I tried out a new first person controller. Currently I'm using the quote unquote built in first person controller in Unity, but some of it is not too easy to work with and I guess there might be another way and a better way of doing it. So I'm on the lookout for a new first person controller without having to code it up myself from the ground up. So this night I tried out a new one called first person all in one. Um, I tried it in this uh, other environment than my own game, a new project, just to try it out. And it was kind of okay, but also a little glitchy. So quickly I just skipped it for now and went back to work on the laser. I just had to try it out because I've been looking at it for some time and, and wanted to try it out. So back to Fireworks Mania again, working on the physics tool laser. You can see here I've now uh, increased the size a little so it fits a little, make it even more uh, glowy, blurry, bloomy thingy. Um, so it looks quite good. Um, but I had some issues when moving around that the laser wouldn't stick to the end of the laser. 
uh, the laser beam wouldn't stick to the end of the laser. But you can see here, I ended up finding a way to making it work. Actually, something I got inspired by Danny, as he had a similar problem in his tutorial about making a grappling gun. Um, I'll put a link in the description to that tutorial so you can see how he fixed it. Um, but in short, the, the way to fix it is to actually draw and update the laser beam in the late update method in Unity. But uh, go and see his tutorial about that. So with the physics tool model in place looking kind of okay for now at least, I went back to the radial menu, the new tools menu here, because I wanted to add a sound when it shows up and disappears, to give some kind of uh, audio feedback uh, together with the physical, uh, with the visual um, uh, fade in or scale up or whatever uh, that it does right now. So I found a matching swoosh sound from the Doozy UI library that I'm using for the UI stuff and uh, tweaked the sound a little, cut it down, made it a little lower and stuff like that. And um, the result is kind of okay for now. Again, everything is work in progress, but um, at least it has some sound when popping up now. And with that it was time to close down the branch that I created in code. That's how you do it in code, you create a branch and do a new feature. And once that feature is kind of satisfied or done, you merge it back into the main um, branch. In my case, it's called the version number that I'm currently working on. Anyway, that's very technical, but uh, those of you who are game developers might know what I'm referring to. And this is how I do it. Branch out, do a feature and merge it back in via a pull request on GitHub. So um, this is where I was now um, with the radial menu kind of okay working, the structure is kind of in place and I can kind of extend, extend it with more um, tools uh, pretty easily. So let's close out the branch and look what we will work on for the last part of this video. Because one of the current challenges we have in the game is setting up a fireworks show. That's very hard right now and uh, as we have been talking about before, we need this load and save kind of mechanism um, that I haven't looked into yet. But this time around I will look into another suggestion that somebody suggested in the Discord as I remember. And talking about Discord, feel free to join the, the community in Discord. There's a link in the description um, we have a nice community going on so please join and be a part of that. The suggestion was that instead of going to each piece of fireworks and setting the fuse time individually, you could have a tool that you set to, uh, let's say, 5 seconds, and then you could go around and shoot, quote unquote, the different uh, pieces of fireworks that you would like to have a fuse time of these, for instance, 5 seconds. So I jumped into Blender and started modeling. I had no idea how a tool like this could look, and it doesn't really matter in the first go here, I just needed something that was a little different than a white cube that I used to use. So I just extruded and did some crazy stuff in Blender, and ended up with this little fella, which <laughs> I think ended up looking like a dog. <laughs> So the idea was to have this uh, duckling gun here, or uh, whatever it looks like right now. Um, we we'll, should have a little display on top of it so you could see um, the time that you set it to before shooting at different pieces of fireworks. I had a little trouble getting that in place, but uh, eventually it ended up looking correct. So with the model and the display in place, it was time to code up the logic that should make this fuse time tool work. The idea is that you set the time on the tool itself by scrolling the wheel back and forth and then you point and shoot quote unquote at the different pieces of fireworks that you want to have that specific fuse time. This way it makes it a lot easier to set a bunch of them um, to the same time quickly. With the logic in place it was time to take it for a spin. Oh, by the way, don't mind the sound when you assign its uh, fuse time. I didn't have any good sounds for it, so uh, I just used, uh, I think it is a metal dumpster hit sound. So don't mind that. So as you can see, the tool actually works as expected. You can set the time on the different fireworks. 
just by shooting at it. But still there's something off with this. It, it doesn't actually make it easy I think. Uh, I know you guys haven't tried this yourself. Um, but yeah, there's something wrong with this approach. It doesn't really make it a lot easier. Maybe it's because I need this save load feature um, to work together with this new stuff. But I also have some kind of idea where I would like to, with another fuse tool, drag fuses between different pieces of fireworks. That could also work and could also be a fun way of doing it. But it's a little more advanced to do it like that. Um, so yeah, I, I think I'll just continue trying out different things because this approach is... I'll leave it in for now, but it's... Uh, I'm not satisfied with it. So um, I think I'll make this the end of this devlog. Um, Hope you enjoyed it, even though nothing much is happening, but uh, I'm very busy at work and other stuff and yeah, therefore not super much happening. Um, however, I try to keep up these weekly devlogs, even though I can't promise anything. I'll do what I can. Um, remember to subscribe if you want to, leave a like uh, if you like this video, join Discord if you want to be part of the community. Yeah, and uh, remember to share the videos uh, with your friends and family, that people that could be interested in either Deadlock or this game, Fireworks Mania. See you in the next video.